please give it up for the comedy talents that are Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> Very nice to be here. So I'm from the East End of London. Let's use the facilities. This is the Cockney Walk. This is your casual Cockney Walk, this. <laughs> this is your standard Cockney Walk. Not a lot going on, just having a little bit of a walk about. There you go, let's have a little walk about, a little look about. This is your casual Cockney Walk. <laughs> then you've got your busy Cockney Walk. Obviously, I'm double busy. I'm double busy. I can't hang about, I've got a sign on to get back to work. I can't hang about. <laughs> Left school with a bottle opener. Made in the third year. It wasn't a rubbish one, it was good because the two biggest departments in our school, woodwork and metalwork. So I made the metal bit in the metalwork department. I went into departmental. <laughs> went across the corridor. I said to the uh, woodwork teacher, do you mind if I put wooden handle on my bottle opener, sir? He said, you're a natural, son. <laughs> Things are gonna work out for you. We made ashtrays in the second year. Bottle openers in the third year. <laughs> Prams in the fourth year. But my big thing in the 80s, chasing women. Back in the 80s, I was an international lover and player. <laughs> I was. I'd made love to women as far afield as Cardiff, <laughs> Cornwall. I got a girl to wank me off on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> it's a day trip. <laughs> it was easy to get sex in the 80s. You had to really work for it back then. Women didn't want to part up too quickly. <laughs> you had to go to work. If you met a girl and you were taking her out, you on a Saturday night, bosh, here we go. Splash a pack of a man. <laughs> Get your jeans out the cleaners. Nice crease on them. There you go. <laughs> and you took her out for the evening. You treated her. You took her out for a steak Diane. Few tins are no the Biancos. <laughs> and if she wanted a prawn cocktail, she got a prawn cocktail. <laughs> Women went mental for the prawn cocktail in the 80s. You see her little face light up. You've sat her down and you've presented her with prawns. <laughs> Lettuce. In a wine glass. Drizzled with the dressing from a thousand islands. <laughs> Not salad cream tonight, princess. <laughs> tonight you're special. You're gonna get a dressing that's been gathered from a thousand islands. <laughs> Brought to this steakhouse in Bethnal Green. <laughs> now you want the vagina. This hasn't changed. Men have chased the vagina since time began. The vagina has changed, as we know. It was still a big hairy beast back in the 80s. <laughs> big hairy, militant, Marxist, feminist vagina. <laughs> I was angry the vagina in the 80s. Had a terrible attitude. I mean, the knickers weren't small and it was still busting out the side. <laughs> Big angry vagina. He started rolling these Marx's knickers down and it would come out. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> but you want the vagina. So I got myself a place. Kitted it out for love. Bed sitter. Quality bed sitter. Not cancel. <laughs> And I went and got all the latest gear. I spent about 700 quid. Right, let's go. <laughs> Take her back. Sit her down on the futon. <laughs> She's half in bed already. <laughs> Up there for thinking. 
go over to my stereo stacker system. Got a stereo stacker. That's an Awawa. <laughs> With a built-in graphic equaliser. That <laughs> does nothing. <laughs> I slip into the cassette deck. Now that's what I call music. <laughs> Two. Now, I know Luther Van Dross will be on in a minute. <laughs> when Luther comes on, bosh, I'm in. <laughs> this frees up the time for me to go off to the kitchenette area. I've got a kitchenette area. It's not a piss hole I'm living in. I've <laughs> got a kitchenette area. I go behind me a little bit of curtain. <laughs> you grab a bit of curtain around your kitchen, come on. <laughs> I change into the uniform of the international player, which we know is the silk black kimono. <laughs> Come back out into the main area. I've kept my jeans on. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I turn round to reveal the dragon. <laughs> Hold that pose. Come back with a nice chilled bottle of blue nun. <laughs> oh, she's gone. <laughs> now, playing days are over anyway. I sorted my life out in the late 80s. Met a very nice girl, proper middle class. She's been skiing and everything. And, uh, <laughs> and we've been, we were about, to, about four years ago. We were together six years. We were making love, right? Making love. She said, I want a baby. I want a baby. <laughs> I said, well, if you come off the pill, I'll start leaving it in, right? <laughs> so, started leaving it in. Child came along, was created. My wife, quite a middle class woman, she said, after a few months, she said, I'm losing my identity, she said, losing my identity. I said, have you finished your cleaning? <laughs> Come on, sit down. You've got a cleaner. <laughs> Everyone's got a cleaner now. Poor people have got cleaners. <laughs> so, she went back to work, leaving me to bring the child up. So I'm pushing him along the street in his 500 pound pram, which I resented initially. Then I got involved in a race in Summerfields. <laughs> oh no, she turns on the tanner. She turns on the tanner. Some idiot in a 200 pound buggy tried to cut me up. <laughs> I said, come on, mate, there's a monkey's worth of Premet coming through here. <laughs> Shouldn't you be in Arston's with that thing? <laughs> I'm not... I'm not a snob. I mean, we're not a, we're not, a, not a snob, but we did buy an overpriced house to store the baby in. You know what I mean? <laughs> In a nice area. <laughs> nice area. And my wife went back to work, so she said, it's the thing about having children is it is a bit tedious because you get up early with them. You get up about half past six. By about half seven, you're running out of ideas, right? <laughs> so the government say, not too much telly, not too much telly. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> he loves a bit of telly. <laughs> Never once has this little boy turned to me and gone, there's nothing on, Dad. So I put him by the telly, right? He's watching Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm reading about the budget deficit, which is very high, as we know. And you should be more worried about it. <laughs> He's watching Thomas. I'm reading the paper. He's watching Thomas. I'm reading the paper. Suddenly, I'm watching Thomas. <laughs> Two years later, I'm a massive fan of Thomas. <laughs> I've got to know the trains again, haven't I? Their little personalities, you know. You think, oh, Toby's turned up. This will be a blinder, this will. <laughs> Toby's turned up. No, because where he's like, uh, he's not a proper diesel or a steamy, and he's square, he plays up a bit, you know? <laughs> so you're guaranteed a good episode with Toby. 
Now, the worst thing about having children, you're thoroughly enjoying an episode of Thomas. The little boy looks up at me and thinks, he's enjoying himself a bit. I'm not having that. <laughs> I think I'll go off and top myself, all right? <laughs> so he goes and gets in the oven. <laughs> Keep me on my toes, and you have to go, hot, hot! And you miss the end of Thomas. <laughs> it ruins the rest of your day. Ruins it. So it gnaws away at you. You think, how did that end? I was like, Whoa. <laughs> and it's not the sort of show you can just pop down the pub that night <laughs> and start asking about, you know what I mean? <laughs> start saying to people, I don't suppose you saw Thomas this morning, did you? <laughs> They brought the orchestra over, right, to um, play out the fate, the Sodar fate. They've only sent Percy to pick them up, haven't they? <laughs> I don't know what the fat controller's thinking about sometimes, I really don't. <laughs> we know it's a job for Gordon, don't we? <laughs> Possibly Henry at a push. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where you at or where you at? <laughs>